Entanglement by Neil Cook. It was the day before I was going away. It was just a normal day when Jenny, my best friend, dropped an hint that this was the chance for me to find a boyfriend on holiday. This made me think that I hadn't been out with anyone for over a year. I knew this was my chance while I was going on holiday. The next day I packed all my clothes and set off to the train station. As I got to the station, the train was just about to leave. I shouted to the guard telling him to stop the train. When he did stop the train, I got on the train and it left. About an hour after the train had left, I was gazing out of the window with a cool breeze blowing on my face. I thought back to the days when I used to be married, when me and my husband used to go for a meal every Saturday night. It was candlelit dinner for two, with two people playing soft music in the background, and he used to buy me a red rose every night after work. Also, the very first time he asked me to marry him. I was only 19 years old and I was still at college. It was one moonlit night when I heard someone playing the violin. <laughs> I looked out of the window and there he was under a tree with the moonlight shining down on his face. <laughs> the tune he was playing was When I Fall In Love. Then in amazement he climbed up the brambles on the side of the building <laughs> and went down on one knee. And took my <laughs> took my hand and put a ring on my finger and said, Will you marry me, my love? I said yes. Then a month later we were to be wed, St John's Cathedral. <laughs> then a week later we went on our honeymoon, we went to Negro Falls. The hotel room was very nice, it had a bed in the shape of a shape of a heart which was red. <laughs> then it happened. I found my <laughs> husband in bed with another woman. The shock came as a surprise to me. I didn't know he was that type of person. I wish I'd never married him now. I left him there, but I was having second thoughts about it, so I decided to forgive him. <laughs> but the time I got to the hotel room, he was gone. Then I heard someone shouting, help, it was my, hus my, my husband. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Uh, then the ticket collector start. Uh, oh yes. Then I heard someone shouting help, it was my husband, he was going to jump off the top of the falls. I shouted, stop, what are you doing? He replied, I love you my darling, and just jumped. This meant he had committed suicide in front of thousands of people. I started to cry. Then the ticket collector started to nug me, started to nuge me, as I was dreaming, he said. He, we arrived at the station. When I got off the train, I went to phone for a taxi to take me back to the hotel where I was staying. When I arrived at the hotel, I booked straight into my room. I unpacked my luggage. Then I decided to have a nice warm shower. After I had had a nice warm shower, I decided to go out on a tour of London. I did plenty of shopping and got lots of souvenirs to take back with me. On the night, I decided to go to the theatre to see an opera, which was Phantom of the Opera. At the end of a brilliant show, I decided to go back to the hotel and get an early night. The next day, I went to a restaurant to have my lunch. I didn't like the food in the hotel. Then I stopped eating and saw the most attractive man come out to my table and ask me if there was anyone sitting here. I replied, no. And he sat down. As he sat down, I gazed into his dark blue eyes, which shone like blue crystals. His eyes met mine, I could see the sunlight shining in them. Then he asked me if I was doing anything tonight. I said, I'm not doing anything tonight. Why? Because I would like to take you out to dinner tonight. I accepted the invitation to dinner. I asked him what time and where. He told me and I went back to my hotel and had a lovely nice shower. When I was the shower, I was thinking of what to wear and what tonight would bring to me. I couldn't wait to find out what had happened. After I got out of the shower, I decided to wear my red dress with the splits down the side, with all the red roses on it. I put on my diamond earrings, which my husband had brought for our anniversary. I also put on my pearl necklace along with my brace bracelets. Then I was ready for the most exciting night since my husband jumped off the Negra Falls and committed suicide. <laughs> then it was time to go and meet him. I sat off to the restaurant and I remembered that the restaurant was only around the corner so I didn't have to phone for a taxi, I walked there. 
When I got there, there was a waiter waiting for me. He was holding a bunch of red roses, which were the best red roses I'd ever seen. There was a message in the side of the roses, which said I would be late tonight, my, my lovely pet. <laughs> which I thought was so romantic, the way he put it. He said he would be half an hour late, said the waiter. After the half an hour passed, still he hadn't come. I was just about to leave when he arrived, just in time, thanks sake. He said, sorry I'm late, I held up at a very important meeting. I replied, no. Anyhow, we ordered the meal, which was roasted chicken in garlic sauce, with a sprinkle of seasoning on it. For dessert, we had a strawberry gatto, and to drink, we had a bottle of the 1966 German wine. After that lovely meal, he suggested if I would like to go to and the nightclub. I said, yes! I would like to. Which one are we going to? Stringfellow's nightclub. I said, are you a member of that? Yes, he replied. He said, I'm a member of a lot of things. <laughs> I'm a member of a lot of things. We went to the nightclub in his driven Rolls Royce, driven by his chauffeur. He took us to the nightclub in no time at all. When we arrived there, we, we went straight in. I always wanted to come here. We got a seat by the dance floor. We sat down by the dance floor. Then he asked me if I wanted anything to drink. I said, yes, I would like a baby Shane, please. <laughs> when he had got the drinks, he sat, he sat down opposite me. I could feel his feet rubbing against my feet. <laughs> then he asked me if I wanted to dance. I said, yes, but I don't know how to dance. Oh, that's OK, he replied. Just copy what I do. <laughs> Which I did. I didn't know it was so energetic and nice. <clears throat> we danced all night and the night was still young with two attractive people having a good time for once, I said. Then it came to last dance which was really slow one and it made feel very young and in love which was true. I was in love. As we were dancing his eyes met mine and we just started staring into each other's eyes. Then he drew himself closer to me and closer until his body was touching mine. And I was thinking, was he going to kiss me or not? I wanted him to kiss me. I hadn't kissed anyone since my husband committed suicide. I wanted him so much to kiss me. Then it happened. He moved closer and closer. His lips began to touch my lips. I could feel the soft touchness of them. He embraced me in his strong arms and squares me in them. Then he started to kiss me harder and harder. It was so nice to be kissed after a long time. I almost forgot what it was like. It was a sensational moment for me. I could feel a tingle going through my body. I was getting excited. Then his tongue did something strange. Anyhow, I enjoyed it. Then he stopped kissing me. But was it something I did? Anyhow, no matter. I just pulled him back into my arms and embraced him and kissed him. After we stopped kissing, he invited me back to his suite at the hotel. After we stopped kissing, he invited me back to his suite at the Hotel Royal, which was very big. When we got to his room, it was very big, than I expected it would be. He made me a nightcap, and asked me to take a seat. I sat down and sat down next to him. He put his arm around me, and we started to kiss heavily. Then he picked me up, and carried me to the bedroom, and then I thought, what's going to happen next? It meant only one thing, he was going to make love to me. After he picked me up and carried me out to the bed, he started to undress me slowly. First he unbuttoned my blouse and started to kiss me all over my body. While he was doing this, I took his shirt off and started to do the same to him. Then we got on the bed and he started to do things that I'd never done before. Then we both woke up with a smile on our face. He said, did you enjoy last night? I replied, yes! <laughs> After we both got changed, we went to breakfast. <laughs> then suddenly he said something amazing, which I thought he would never ask. <laughs> which was, will you marry me? I said, yes! Even without thinking about it. Then we went back to his hotel room so we could start to pack. While I went back to my hotel room and packed. <laughs> went, then we met to his hotel room <laughs> and said, back at home. We were to be married. Two weeks later, at his mansion in Essex, I lived in only a couple of miles. Well, about 15 miles. <laughs> 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 the 
when came the wedding, it was so terrific. <laughs> By the way, his name was Anthony, if I forgot to write it. The End by Neil Cook, who brought you the terrific tale of Gonzo Island. <laughs> oh, dear.